guys are going to do the widen for us. They're going to cut the rim over there. Last week on A Dream Called Marai, we saw how Marai's rims for her new wider tyres, that are on order, will be widened to accommodate her new shoes. We also saw how an online tyre sales website failed not once, but three times in getting Marai's new shoes delivered. In with anger, out with anger. This week we wait in anticipation for the arrival of Marai's new footwear. We also realize that Marai is a big heavy girl and that in order to drive Marai once completed, we may need to go back to school. It is Wednesday morning and if it is Wednesday morning that means that tires.co.za are supposed to deliver our four brand new spanking tires today after being given a big run around over the last week. Uh, this has effectively put us a week back in um, getting the rims modified to be able to take those tires and we need to to get Mirai on those tires so we can see what the clearance is and how we carry on adapting around the wheel arches. It did not take long for my enthusiasm to get squashed like a fly against a windscreen. I just had a phone call from Thomas. I'm going to swear now, sorry Ma, but my fucking <coughs> tires are not being delivered today. What Thomas from tires.co.za has promised me now is that he promises my tires will be here before Friday. He also says he will refund me the price of one tire. Now that's substantial, that's 5,300 Rand. Um, so yeah, I've accepted that. While waiting for tires.co.za to live up to their side of the agreement, I figured it was time to address an issue that has been worrying me for some time regarding the license needed to drive her once our rebuild is completed. Behind me you see all the stuff that we took out of Marai. Uh, so she's a bit light on the foot at the moment. She did weigh 3,400 kilograms, her dry weight, fully laden, 5,000 kilograms. When you dealing with a motorhome, we're working on that 3,400 kilogram weight. And because it's a motorhome, you only need your normal driver's license as long as you stick to that 3,400 kilograms. Now, with us putting all this other stuff into her, we think we're going to go over the 3,400 kilograms, which means I am going to have to go back to school. I've got to get my heavy duty driver's license. There's so much conflicting information out there regarding this issue in South Africa that it is best to do your own homework. A really good place to get information on this driver's license issue is on the Facebook page of the Motorhome Club of South Africa. If you're a motorhome owner and you want more info on it regarding your license and what the law says, uh, just find them on Facebook. It's the Motorhome Club of South Africa. There is quite a process ahead regarding getting Marai legally changed from a bus to a motorhome and we will go into that in detail when the time is right. To make our rebuild go smoothly from a weight perspective, getting a heavy duty license seems like the best way to go. Which brings me to my next point. Let's talk weight for a while. I was a chubby kid, hey? Like a little chubby redhead. <laughs> And I can remember many years ago um, swimming in a river on a, a family farm and somebody I cared, loved and respected, I heard this voice wafting down the bank and I must have been about 10 years old. An adult's voice, a woman. And this person said, oh look, Philip should wear a bra. I'm nearly 60 now. And I have never, ever, ever forgotten those words. People call it body shaming, and that's what it is. If you're a chubby kid, you're a chubby kid. You're going to grow out of it. But my point is, why did you have to say it? 
Why did you say those words? What did you get out of it? After that, my self-esteem took a dive. To compound matters, I was one of those kids who was bullied for over a year at my primary school in Peter Maritzburg. This little boy was pinched until he was blue. He was punched, his glasses broken, often, which got him into trouble at home and he never spoke about it to his parents. He would try to hide in the classroom during break time so that the three boys who were hurting him could not find him. But they did, day after day. Fortunately, this little boy was able to pick himself up. The military also had their say on his life. If those bullies knew what that chubby little redhead had been exposed to, they would be afraid, very afraid. Then, through the power of love, he started to learn to grow and has never stopped growing or learning. But till this day, weight and weight gain plays a consuming part in his life, all because of one supposedly innocent little jibe on the banks of a river nearly 52 years ago. That was also bullying. I then learnt that even on this current project of converting Mirai from bus to motorhome, that there were other victims of bullying very close by. Rocky, you said you were bullied at school. Just tell me about this. I'm yeah, I was. Um, mainly because of the... I'm being small. I look a little bit different than most people. I'm a bit squint. But <laughs> yeah, so I was uh, a target. Now, what, what, what did the Oaks do? No, just bullying, teasing, name calling, mm, stupid things. Yeah, make you feel cut. Yeah. yeah, well, now I'm over it, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> more grown up now, so I don't care. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't think people realize that it makes what it does to a person, particularly when you're at school. Yes, yeah. You've got to go back day after day. Yeah, it makes your school career cuck. It's like you don't want to go to school. You don't want to have to deal with that crap. In South Africa, out of the 2.2 million children who go to school, 57% of those kids are bullied. That's according to stats. That's a lot of children who are getting beaten up, harassed, victimized on a daily basis. And that's going to cause social issues. So I find it quite disturbing that there's very little online uh, in, the, in the way of support for a bullied kid. So I don't even know who you could call. Um, this is Childline. You could probably start there. There's a couple of other websites, but... Uh, yeah, for the large, it looks like a bullied kid is uh, they're pretty much on their own. Okay, so enough of being heavy. Let's get back to the matter at hand. Mirai's shoes, or the lack thereof. It is Friday morning. And no, don't get excited. Those are not Mirai's tyres behind me. Uh, those are my vehicle spare tyres. But hopefully, later today, against that wall we're gonna stack some nice new rubber for Mirai hopefully I have just received a phone call from the guys delivering the tires saying they are here but their truck is too big to come on the little dirt roads to get to my house so I'm on my way there to see what's going on It was like finding the Holy Grail. Mirai's shoes hit the soil of Leisure Bay. I have to admit, these are sexy pumps and Mirai is going to look awesome in them. Yeah. Three episodes of A Dream Called Mirai. That's how long it took to get these tires here. Um, could I recommend tires.co.za? Oh, jury's out, hey. Um, in fairness, Thomas the Tire Guy always answered my, uh, my calls, uh, he always returned my calls, so it wasn't like he was trying to hide from me. Uh, the, the service is a, is, a, is a good one, you know, it's a good service, uh, we need it, but delivery, hey, got to sort their delivery out, then they'll be cooking, man, they'll be cooking. So I do wish them well, um, but... <laughs> Mirai shoes are here, so Alleluia! All that remains is for Thomas the Tire Guy to fulfill his promise of refunding me for one of the tires. Next week, 
Well, I have no idea what we are doing next week. Hopefully, we send Mariah's rims off to be widened in order to accommodate her sexy new rubber. Remember to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. We are also on Twitter. You will find us under A Dream Called Mariah. Until next time, keep safe and keep your dreams alive.